Welcome back to another UFC fight prediction video. In this video, I'll be predicting the prelim fights for UFC Fight Night on ESPN Plus, Magomed Sharipal versus Qatar. So without further ado, let's get to our first prelim and our first fight on the card. So in our first fight, we have in the light heavyweight division, Ed Herman versus Cadiz Ibragamov. So I'm not sure if this is the first fight on the card, but because they haven't really added it to the um, to the card itself. It's on the card, but they haven't added it to the list, but it don't matter. They're, they're going to be on the card. So in this one, Cadiz Ibragamov, he's a young, he's an aggressive fighter. Certainly has some skills. But in his last fight, he clearly showed where his mind at, is at. It's not where it needs to be. He certainly had the aggression and the skills to put Ed Herman away early. But Ed Herman is a veteran. I think he can certainly beat a guy like this and has beaten guys like Ibragamov. I think Bragamov needs a bit more experience, but he does have a puncher's chest. And if he's landing shots like he was landing in his last fight, he could certainly put Ed Herman away with any one of those punches. But I feel like Ed Herman's gonna be able to weather the storm and really start taking advantage of him, like catching him, counter him, tag him. Ed Herman's packs a pretty big punch as well. So it, Ed Bragamov's coming too aggressive. He can't get countered and get put out. And I think that's really a lot of what's gonna happen. Bragamov being over aggressive and Ed Herman being the veteran he is to take advantage. And if Bragamov wants to use his wrestling, Ed Herman is actually a very solid wrestler. He has good takedown defense and started his camp. I think I forget the name at, at the gym, but Dan Henderson gym, and that was a very wrestling heavy gym. So he, even though never forget that Aaron Herman has some very solid wrestling and re wrestling defense, so he can neutralize it. Bragamov's wrestling. Then on the feet, like I said, Ed Herman's a better striker. Bragamov is young and aggressive and powerful, but Ed Herman is the more technical fighter, and I'm a favorite his technique and experience to, you know, whether that storm a big counter him, wear him down, and put him away. And I think he does it in the second round. So in this fight, I got Ed Herman via second round TKO. Now onto our next fight, we have in the lightweight division. Alexander Yakolev versus Roosevelt Roberts. So in this fight, Yakolev is a pretty big wrestler coming from welterweight division. But I think Roosevelt Roberts' wrestling defense is solid enough to counter Yakolev's takedowns. And I think he has to set up his takedown with his striking. He can't just come in and take down Roberts down. I think Roberts is just a bigger, big fighter as well. He's long, he's young. I think he's got to gain Roberts' respect on the feet. I don't think he's going to really be able to do that to set up his takedowns effectively. So I think Roberts is going to be able to Pick him apart on the outside and defend the shots because he's not going to really be able to get in with shots, to, like his punches to get those shots. So I think Robert's going to be effective at def like defending the takedowns and be able to keep the fight where he wants it or be able to defend well enough on defense with the takedown defense and maybe mix up and shoot some shots of his own. But for the most part, defending the shots, keeping Yakolev from taking good shots and picking him apart on the feet. And I think he beats him to a clean cut decision. So in this fight, I have Roosevelt Roberts via decision. Now to our next fight, we have in the Bantamweight division, Grigory Popov, Popov versus Davy Grant. So looking at this fight, Grigory, like Grigory Popov, I really don't see nothing too phenomenal from him. His, his competition up until the UFC was poor, and then he stepped in the UFC and got knocked out. So uh, And didn't really show much outside of heart. And I don't see no amazing grappling from him, no amazing striker, just a solid fighter with heart that probably still needs a lot of more development. Now going against Davy Grant, I don't see Popov having no amazing grappling. He has some submission on records, but the guys he beat were piss poor competition. And David Grant probably can out grapple him. And on the feet, David Grant's, even though he might not be no super standoutish fighter, he's one of the more technical strikers in the division. So he's a very solid fighter with a solid striking background. I think this fight gonna play on the feet. I think Grant's gonna be too fast, too sharp, and be able to pick him apart to a decision in this one. I don't really see no area where Popoff presents any real danger to Grant. So in this fight, I got David Grant via decision. Now to our next fight, we have in the women's bantamweight division, Panny Kianzad versus Jessica Rose Clark. So these two more met before, and I think they fought to a close decision where Kian Zad came out on top. And looking at this fight, I don't think much has necessarily changed. These fighters both have a lot more experience. Kian Zad was so close to being an uh, ultimate fighter winner and just came up short in the finale. I'm not saying the fight was close, but she was in the finale. She got dominated, but she was in the finale. And Rose Clark, she's been in UFC. I had a couple good wins. But for the most part, nothing has changed between these two. It's going to be another fight where both fighters are going to be out there trying to battle for who can get the top position, who can out, slightly outvalue the other. It's going to be another tight, closely competitive fight. And I'm still going to link to Kansas. She won the first one before, but I think it's going to be another close one, probably be one of those fights that's going to be having the judges scratch their head a little bit for who can get the top control. And it's probably going to be a back and forth with Rose Clark and carrying some takedowns with Kansas, controlling some takedowns. And it really going to be one of these fights that's going to be up for grabs for either woman. And even at the judges' scorecards, it's going to be like up for grabs. It's going to be up for debate. But I think Kanzad is going to be able to do just a little bit more in this fight. Both controllers trying to get the volume. Both trying to get control, have lead on the control time. But it's going to be a close fight that could go either way. And that's about as much as I can predict for this fight. So in this fight, I had Panny Kanzad via decision. Now to our next fight, we have in the welterweight division, Abu Abukar Nurmagomedov versus David Zawada. So kind of, this fight kind of cut and dry right here. Nurmagomedov has that good sambo background, solid fighter. <clears throat> Striking certainly could use some improvements. 
definitely give you some more experience in MMA and work on some fine tuning some skills, you know, mixing this game together well. But against David Zawada, I don't think he necessarily needs too much against Zawada. I think Zawada is a solid fighter, but not a very standout fighter. He has some decent striking, some decent grappling, but really all he is is a decent fighter. No disrespect to him, but that's just what I've seen. I think Nurmagomedov can certainly dominate if he can implement his grappling and set it up, and I think he'll be able to set it up and find relatively good success against Zawada. I think it's still a competitive fight, but I think Nurmagomedov's takedown, his control time, will be what aids the fight for him. Competitive, but clear enough that Nurmagomedov should win two, if not three rounds of this fight, of this three-round fight. So in this fight, I got Abu, Ka- Abu Bakar, Nurmagomedov via decision. Now to our next fight we have in the middleweight division, Roman Kapilov versus Carl Robertson. So looking at this fight, this is a very dangerous fight for both men right here. Two solid strikers, two solid fighters. But I think in um, Carl Robertson's last fight, he showed that his grappling is certainly improving. It's not all that like amazing yet, but defensively, he certainly showed his toughness. He showed his ability to neutralize some positions, get gain advantageous positions, and show some more wrinkles in his game. I think between the two, Kyle Robinson is the fastest striker, the harder hitting striker, and the sharper striker. And the shots come straight down the middle. So I think he could pick two Kapalov off on the feet. I think Kapalov is going to try to mix it in with his pressure, get some takedowns, or make it ugly, smuggling his cage, and try to be rough and land those big shots. But I think Kyle Robinson straighter, faster shots, going to pick him apart. And I think in the clinch, Kyle Robinson is dangerous there. He has some very sharp elbows. So I think he really could just pick apart Kapalov on the feet. Kapalov is going to try to pressure, and that's where he's going to find success if he does find success. But more so, I think that pressure is going to allow. Um, Robertson to walk Kapilov into shots. And I think he puts him away in the second. So in this fight, I got Carl Robertson via second round TKO. Now to our cold prelim head- headliner we have in the welterweight division, Rustam Kabilov versus Sergey Konzoko. So at first I was going to go with Sergey Konzoko. I thought like he has a good grappling background. He's longer. He could do this and do that. But then I re- realized and looked back at some of his fight that he got taken down by a much lesser grappling than Rustam Kabilov. And for the most part, the guy that... um. Kyle Zalko for the style in his first fight was a much lesser version of what Rustam Kabalov brings. And that guy was still able to find two takedowns in that fight. And even like some Kyle Zalko fights, and a lot of times in that third round, he kind of slows down. I think um, Kabalov's going to be on him the whole time and pushing a much higher pace than what he's used to and bringing a much higher level of wrestling and grappling than what he's used to. And they going to feed more pressure and experience. I think Kabalov's able to find a lot of success with his grappling. And unlike in his last fight, he's not going to be going against a high level grappler who's going to be trying to submit him and it t- sweeps and nothing. I think Kyle's going to be able to take him down, control him and wear on him and beat on him. And that will, in turn, make Sergei Kanzoko striking less effective because he'll be worried about the shot. He's going to be wearing that, worn down from the grappling, the ground and pound, the pressure. And that's going to make Kabbalah striking and start to flourish a little bit, or at least give him more success in striking. He's going to be worried about the wrestling, be fatigued from wrestling. And he's going to be a catch from over top, catch from underneath. And really just put on a smothering performance. But I think he'll still be competitive. I think Sergei Kanzoko will be able to get to his feet a couple times, land a couple of volume, land a couple of flurries here and there. But more so, I think Rusin Kabbalah is going to be able to get to the shot, secure some takedowns. Because if that guy's able to get two shots, I think Kabbalah is going to at least be able to get four. In a three round fight, four takedowns leads to a high chance of you getting the decision victory. And I think Kabbalah was at least able to get three, if not four, if he needs them, if he doesn't get a finish up. But I think Kabbalah is able to have a lot of success with his wrestling. And that's his wrestling is going to be his path to victory, basically. So in this fight, I got Rustam Kabbalah via decision. Now to our prelim headliner we have in the light heavyweight division. Magomed Ankalev versus Daicha Lungiabila. So looking at this fight right here, Daicha Lungiabila or Daicha champion, whatever he call, he wants to go by. Lots of power, very explosive, very dangerous. But kind of a small light heavyweight to be honest. I think he's only what, about 5'10", 5'11". It's not like he's that big or that amazing of a grappler. He does have a good judo background. I don't think he really has the frame or the skills to necessarily, you know... Allow him to be that small at weight. Like he's probably gonna have to drop the middleweight in my opinion. I think, is he get if he before if he either suffers his first loss at this weight class, or he just goes into this tough fight and he realizes that I gotta go down. He's gonna eventually go down. I think he's definitely gonna go down within his next three fights. I think this is one of these fights that's gonna make him go down. So looking at him versus um, Magomed Ankalev, this guy is a very scary dude and probably one of the most slept on light heavyweight prospects in the division right now. People forget he's here, but this is a guy that has solid striking. I think he almost have a karate bag on a striking athlete. So he has some real good kicks, real good shots, very good at um, judging the range. And then he has some crazy strength, and he's a Sambo world champion. This guy is very dangerous. If his skills go all the way, like he fully reaches his potential, he could be better than Khabib is pound for pound, in my opinion, if he, all of his skills go together. Like he has the Sambo skills that Khabib has, plus better striking than we ever seen from Khabib. But he's this guy that puts all his skills together. But right now, I think this is a very dangerous dude right here. 
I think he's a much more well-rounded fighter between the two. I think he could dictate the pace. He's a bigger fighter. To, he could take Lungiaba down. And really, all he's worrying about with Lungiaba, he's not worrying about no submission attempts for the most part. He did get submitted once. Got to respect it. But he's not worried, really worried about no submission attempts from Lungiaba. And maybe that punch was chance. But I think Aguilar was able to judge the range well and not get caught by these big hooks or big shots. And I think he's able to take him down, wear on him, take the strength out of his punches, take the pop out of his punches and wear on him and beat on him. I think it'll be a smothering beat down affair for Lungiabla. I think Maga um Magomed puts him away late in the third round. So in this fight I got Magomed Ankalev via third round TKL. And that concludes my fight predictions for the prelims of UFC Fight Night on ESPN Plus, Magomed Sherry Paul versus Qatar. And as always, thanks for watching.